Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 27 of What If Naruto Was The Red X. If you guys enjoy this what if, and want to see part 28 of it, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. Naruto groaned, then opened one eye and grunted when he saw he was still in the sore like realm of his mindscape, Kyuubi's massive form grinning down at him. You look so pathetic right now, Ninjin. Kyuubi noted and Naruto glared at the creature before looking to his arms. Each of his limbs were being held aloft by reddish-black tendrils of darkness, as was the rest of his torso, pulling on them, the blonde grunted, and then relaxed when he noted their strength. What the hell is this? Naruto grumbled out, and the Kyuubi chuckled darkly, his chakra spreading out in waves all over the mindscape. The things you deny as part of yourself, made manifest by your current condition. Kyuubi replied, and Naruto looked up at the beast as it grinned down at him. Condition. Naruto questioned and Kyuubi nodded its head with a chuckle. That grey news that covered you, it destabilized your very DNA, unfortunately causing your mind to start to unravel as well. It would have driven you into a berserker rage, however, in my own infinite generosity ninja, I've started to use my power to keep you from fully being destabilized into nothingness. Kyuubi explained and Naruto frowned, and then wondered how its chakra was accomplishing a task like that. Holding your body and mind together. That is actually not so easy, it's taking a toll on both of us. Kyuubi stated and Naruto blinked, before looking at the beast with white eyes. You, can read my thoughts now. Naruto questioned and the Kyuubi chuckled. I'm holding all that you are together of course I can. I'd be more surprised if I couldn't gaki. Kyuubi replied and then looked around as the ooze shifted slightly, and Naruto groaned. Well if you know so much about this tell me how to get out of it already. Naruto growled out and Kyuubi scoffed. If it were that easy I would have done something myself. Well it is greatly amusing seeing you eaten alive. I am not so confident that either of us would survive the destabilization, all either of us can do is keep your mind and body stable long enough for someone out there to fix this little problem. And as for that darkness currently coating you, all I know is your human analogies like, don't allow your inner demons to control you. Kyuubi then stated while a slimy clot hand reached out of the shadows, and pushed down on Naruto's head. We will not be so easily destroyed great one, we are the darkness he has hidden for so long. We will not be imprisoned any longer. A hissing distorted voice commented, while a familiar pair of orange eyes loomed behind Naruto. What's with the Wii and since when can you talk? Naruto demanded while his demon pushed down on his head and then leaned towards his ear. We speak because this is our mind, here we are not limited by simple earthly limitations. Do you see only one of us? There are more this one and other one are two we are we not I. Though this one is the pieces and traits of other one that other one rejects. The demon responded while moving from Naruto's head and Kyuubi sighed. Gaki it's referring to you and it is one person when it speaks. And given that it is a part of you that's a fairly accurate description. Kyuubi offered and Naruto grunted, then looked up to glare at Kyuubi. I kinda figured, that when he explained it. Naruto growled out and the inner demon pushed his head down once more. We think that other one should not insult the great one. He is all that is keeping us whole, we owe him much for that. The inner demon commented, and Kyuubi couldn't help a smug grin. At least someone around here knows how to respect his betters. Kyuubi noted and Naruto twitched while trying to yank his arm free. Piss off fox. Naruto shouted, and the inner demon laughed before releasing his head as it backed off into the darkness behind him. We shall leave other one and great one, to deal with one another this one must seek a way to take control of this body for ourselves. The inner demon stated while Kyuubi watched as it left and then frowned. What the hell did it mean by that? Naruto demanded and Kyuubi rolled his eyes for a moment. Dinkaki, that was the living embodiment of everything you deny about yourself. All the anger, hate, and pain you've ever denied given form. It's half of who you are, you can't control this body because you each share the same will, so it's trying to find a way around it. Though it is a futile effort. Kyuubi replied then muttered under his breath and Naruto blinked before grimacing. Shit, since when is my mind so fucked up? Naruto wondered to himself and the ancient demon rolled his eyes. Do you think this place being a sower is normal? You hold in many things about yourself, usually your more aggressive traits and they build within you. This creature for instance, is a manifestation of all your anger and pain, things you haven't allowed yourself to work through or accept about yourself. Your mind has always been a wreck because of it, thus, reflects how you hold in those emotions by appearing as a sower. Kyuubi explained to the blonde and Naruto blinked before giving the creature a look. What? He asked and Kyuubi grumbled in his throat. Plainly put for an idiot like you ninja. That creature is made up of your darker, nastier, more sinister traits. Traits you don't accept about yourself. Well this is true, it is still a part of you, thus, you wills are conjoined, and neither of you can control your body outside of this place. Kyuubi explained once more, wishing that the ninja knew more about how the mind worked. Alright, if I'm not controlling my body, and it's not controlling my body, who is? You? Naruto asked the beast and the Kyuubi snorted. No? 
Your body is currently running on what you would call autopilot. So basically, your instincts are driving it at the moment, so, if it gets hungry, it will search for food, if it feels threatened, it will attack. Got it. The ancient demon explained and Naruto rolled his eyes before nodding his head. Okay, that explains a few things I guess, though I wish you knew how to get me down from here. Naruto grumbled while hanging in the air, and the Kyubi snorted while grinning towards the human. That's easy, trick the demon into letting you down, how, I don't care, just stop bothering me, while well, I'm trying to keep you in one piece, though. I must wonder how dear Sasuke is faring with his own transformation, without something like me to stave off his destabilization I imagine it may empower him, but it will also wear his body and mind down until he dies from it. Kyubi mused to himself with an evil chuckle and Naruto blinked. Wait, what do you mean by that? Naruto questioned and the Kyubi rolled his eyes once more. I told you, that green news destabilized your DNA, well, whoever else was covered with it will be in the same boat as you. And without a healing factor like you, or an antidote, they'll slowly fall to madness, then shortly after that, death. Kyubi replied and Naruto's eyes widened in shock. Damn what a seriously nasty way to go. Naruto mumbled before his eyes snapped open. Kar-chan. Shit she was covered in that crap as well. I've gotta save her. Naruto said mostly to himself while renewing his struggles with the darkness covering him. Relax Ninjin, your precious little Hanyu will be fine. Her own healing factor should keep her safe like I do for you. Kyubi replied and Naruto breathed out a sigh of relief, visibly relaxing at that news. Oh thank Kami-sama she'll be safe. He mumbled, either not noticing what Kyubi called Raven, or not caring about it. Well that depends on what your definition of safe is Gaki. Kyubi thought with a mental laugh, while closing its eyes as it got back to work, while Naruto contemplated a way, to have his inner demon let him down, Titan's tower. Cyber pushed open the doors to the tower and sighed while walking inside. Man, it's just one thing after the other with this town. He said to himself while rubbing his face and then walked to the elevator. Hitting the call button, Cyborg walked into it and then hit the button for the floor of the infirmary. Leaning into the side of the elevator, Cyborg made a mental list of the many things the green stuff could be, none of it was good, and he was leaning towards mutagen if not some kind of evil virus. Then again, I don't think that many chemicals affect the mind like what's going on with Ray. Cyborg said to himself, while the elevator stopped on his floor and the doors opened. Cyborg was silent as he looked out into the hall, and then held up a hand as it turned into his sonic cannon. The outside was completely dark, but it looked like a monster had ripped its way through the entire hall, claw marks and large dents in the walls, sparking wires hanging from the ceiling, mini turrets he'd set up had been clearly ripped apart or bitten in half. Oh man, this is really starting to look a lot like an all monster movie Beast Boy would watch. Cyborg said to himself and then blinked for a moment as he realized he would either be the military muscle sent in to deal with the problem, and was mauled, or the scientist who died a very cliched. Quick death, I'm hoping I'm neither. Cyborg said to himself as he walked out of the elevator, his metal feet crunching the plastic that had been ripped out of some of the walls. Okay, I have two plausible explanations for this see the raven's fear personality got loose, and Wick scary is back or, Naruto's transformed into an evil vicious monster that wants to destroy me, and everything else in his path. Cyborg said to himself as he moved down the halls of the tower, turning on his shoulder light to look into the infirmary as he reached it. It by far was worse than the outside, with the beds torn apart, and some of Naruto's clothes scattered around the room. Shit, well, looks like Nar's a monster, not much difference when compared to him being pissed though. Cyborg mused before making his way into the room, and saw Naruto's orange spiral mask, Green News still clinging to it. Gotcha. He mumbled while walking over to the mask and used a few utensils to get a sample of the Green News. Placing what he managed to scrape off into a small beaker, which he stuffed into a drawer on his chest, Cyborg then stood back up with a frown. But right now I just need to figure out a way to analyze this. Cyborg said to himself before turning and making his way out of the room, only to stop and freeze as he saw something's tail past the door. Turning off his light, Cyborg then switched his cybernetic eye to night vision, while moving out of the room. Looking down the hall he saw a large creature sniff around for a moment, before slamming its fists into the door to the elevator. Aw oh shit. He mumbled and one of the long ears on the creature's head corked in his direction. Mentally cursing, Cyber turned tail and ran down the hall, while the creature turned and narrowed its yellow eyes dangerously. Crouching down, the beast let out a screeching roar before lunging down the hall after Cyber. Turning down the hall, Cyber heard the call and quickly tried to think of an idea to buy him some time. The basement if I can get him in an elevator, I can drop it to the basement, that should buy me just enough time to get out of the tower. Cyber said to himself before yelping as a bolt of lightning came from behind him. Turning his head, the titanium teen saw the massive creature from before, lightning arching over its form. Oh hell. It just had to be able to do something like that, didn't it? Cyborg complained while ducking down another corner as the beast howled before giving chase. Turning down another corridor, Cyborg ducked into a room and quickly slammed the door shut behind him. Breathing a sigh of relief he then yelped and rolled forward as the beast's large claws started to rip through the doors. 
shit. Cyborg exclaimed and looked around, then grabbed the floor and ripped himself a hole before jumping to the floor below. Back in the room, the massive creature ripped the door out and then made its way into the room. Looking around for its prey, the creature then narrowed its eyes on the floor and sniffed at the hole. Hissing as a click echoed from its throat at the same time, the creature hopped down the hole, following after Cyborg, Jump City. The rest of the Titans were not having much better luck when it came to finding Raven. It was almost as if she vanished until they finally saw the girl, now in grey, sitting on a bench in the park with an almost sullen look. Raven. Ned called as they made their way over to her, and all of them slid to a halt in front of her. Like a few of the others, this one had added a cosmetic change to her outfit, in the form of an extra brooch on the front of her cloak, both of them holding her cloak to her leader tightly. However her hair was also longer, now reaching shoulder length, and her eyes had thin slits. Ah, timid is of you. Beast Boy suddenly asked and the girl looked to him, before nodding her head. Looking among the titans for a moment, she then stopped on Starfire, and it begun. I'm sorry I spit in your face. She said to the alien princess, her voice soft and quiet much like a certain Hyuga girl, and Starfire blinked. Oh, you are forgiven friend Raven. She said and Raven turned to Kid Flash. I'm sorry I attacked you. She said and Kid Flash rubbed the back of his neck. No prop. He offered while Beast Boy sighed and reached to the side to look at a newspaper with a shake of his head. I'm sorry I gave you a wet woolly. She then added, and Kid Flash looked to Knight, and the others and they shrugged. Hey, like I said it's no problem, you weren't yourself. He insisted while Beast Boy crumpled up and threw the newspaper away. Turning, the grey cloaked raven then focused on Nightwing, and he looked at her strangely. I'm sorry for the time I broke your coffee mug. She said meekly, and Knight looked at Star who shrugged, obviously confused. Oh uh, when was this? He asked in timid thought for a moment. When we moved into the tower. She admitted and Knight's eyebrows shot up towards his hairline. And Starfire, I'm sorry I called you annoying and loud. And I'm also sorry for always yelling at you, and for the... Timid said, then went into a very long list of apologies, apologizing for even things she'd done years ago nearby. Beast Boy sighed while happily watching the clouds and tuned Timid out, already having gone through this once in Raven's mindscape. And I'm sorry for talking so much, and I'm sorry for always being so grumpy, and... Timid tried to finish show me for Donna to place a hand over her mouth. For the thousandth time Raven. Knight started to say, and all four titans then chorused as one, Beast Boy smirking as he watched on. We forgive you. They exclaimed as one, and Timid blinked, before poking her index fingers together shyly. Alright, now that that's over. Beast Boy then commented and got a glare from the others, mostly for not telling about this. Do you know what's going on with you Timid? You've been switching personalities all day. Beast Boy questioned of the girl, and she took a thoughtful look before sighing. I don't know I was just trying to keep out of the way of the others like usual when I suddenly wound up out here. Timid admitted softly and Beast Boy sighed before looking to Knight for orders. Alright, will you follow us without running off Timid? Knight asked and the grey cloaked raven meekly nodded her head. Alright, then let's head back to the tower now, before something else happens. Knight commented and Timid slowly got up before following them as they made their way towards the tower. Say, how come you were sitting alone in the park? Donna asked while looking at Timid, and she looked down while poking her index fingers together. I didn't want to get in anyone's way. She replied, timidly as always and a frown crossed Nightwing's features. You never in the wear Raven, you're a friend remember? Nightwing told the girl and she just continued to poke her fingers together while looking at the ground silently. Looking back at Timid for only a moment longer, Knight then looked at Beast Boy with a frown. Beast Boy, are there any more emotions we should watch out for? The older teen questioned, and Beast Boy shrugged his shoulders disinterestedly. None that I know of dude, I only met happy, timid, and brave when I was in Ray's mind. Beast Boy replied, and Knight groaned lightly, wondering what was going to happen next. No sooner did he wonder that than Timid stopped and looked around. Noticing she stopped the others turned to her and she sighed. Sorry. She mumbled as her cloak flashed red, before she fell to the ground. Friend Raven. Starfire exclaimed while flying over to the girl, and sat her up. Groaning the girl sat up on her own power soon after, her cloak turning yellow as she did, though her boots turned black. Oh my, that was quite an interesting experience. She noted, her voice and tone different sounding almost bookish. Blinking open her violet eyes the girl then held a hand out to form a pair of glasses, which she then placed on the bridge of her nose. Well now, all things considered this is looking like a very bad situation to be in. She noted while seeing the titans around her and thus stood up before brushing herself off and checking her state of being for a moment. Obviously, brave, happy, timid, and sloth have been out, and we're dressing up our body in their favorite things. The yellow raven noted, while noticing the sleeves of her leotard had been removed and shook her head at the grease and filth on her cloak. Positively dreadful, I swear, none of them know how to keep anything tidy. She mumbled before waving her hand, black energy flowing over her cloak for a moment before it was revealed to be in pristine condition once more. Nutting her head she then made her clothes just as pristine and smiled to herself. Ah, now that is much better. 
she said to herself with a nod of her head, while the other titans merely stared at her for a moment. Ah, Raven? Beast Boy asked and the yellow cloaked girl sighed. Of course. But I believe I should remind you that I'm an alternate emotion. Most of my sisters just call me intellect. Intellect offered with a casual tone and Nightwing blinked before sighing in relief. Finally, now can you tell us what's happening to her yourself? Knight asked the girl and she crossed her arms and thought about it for a moment. What's happening to me? Well, all even I know is that rage was on the loose. Raven decided to try and seal her up again while we were still sleeping, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of her ever since. Intellect replied before frowning as she looked towards the tower. Now then, given the nature of this development and its correspondence with our unfortunate encounter with those shinobi fellows, I believe that the green substance that covered us may have had some form of adverse effect on us. Intellect then mused aloud, while walking towards the tower, Beast Boy scratching his head as he and the others followed her. Yudet, please speak English, you're making my brain hurt. Beast Boy told the girl and Intellect sighed, before turning around and giving him a look for a moment, as if to tell him he was an idiot. Plainly put Beast Boy. Our condition only started when that green news covered us, and it cannot be merely a coincidence since this has never happened to us before. Thereby, the green news has something to do with our continued ailment. Intellect explained and Nightwing blinked for a moment. Not bad, I always knew Raven was smarter than she let on. Knight noted with a smirk, and Intellect nodded her head before crossing her arms with a proud smile. Yes. I had a feeling you would have easily deduced my intelligence was used for more than just witty remarks and sarcasm. Intellect mused aloud while still smiling to herself, and Starfire flew over to hover beside of her. Excuse me Intellect, but if you are the smartness of Raven, why are you a personality is not intelligence not an emotion? Starfire questioned and Intellect smiled while nodding her head. Correct Starfire. I was wondering when someone might notice that. And to answer your question, no, I am not Raven's knowledge. Rather, I am her curious and inquisitive nature, her more polite and cleanly attitude, and her love of reading and learning. Thus while I know everything Raven does, as all we emotions do, I also seek more knowledge to better herself as a person. Intellect explained and Starfire made a note with her mouth while floating beside of the girl. So you mean to say that you're actually her curiosity? Kid Flash questioned while walking beside of the girl, and Intellect rolled her eyes. In a way, yes, but in more ways than one, no. I prefer to be thought of as her pursuit of knowledge. Intellect responded and Kid Flash slowly nodded his head, while Nightwing looking to Intellect as she stopped at a window to a bookstore. Ah, uh, hello, we need to get to the tower. He reminded and Intellect grinned sheepishly while moving away from this store window. Yes I know we do and I am sorry about that, it's just I saw a rather interesting book I've been meaning to read and. She started to say before shaking her head as her cloak flashed red like the others. Oh dear what was that? She wondered while looking at herself and then placed a hand to her head with a visible grimace. Something is very wrong here. She mumbled quietly to herself while Beast Boy was at her side soon after, and wondering what was happening to her. Dude, what is going on in your head? I mean, Brave started wigging out and attacking us earlier for some reason, and then Timid disappeared when her cloak started to change colors. Beast Boy wondered aloud and Intellect was silent for a moment before her eyes snapped wide open as realization struck her. Oh no, 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 no. She said to herself and then turned around to face them, eyes wide in fright. You must get away from me. I'm no longer safe to be around, staying close to me will only make things worse, please, do not attempt to find me, or I fear you will all come to great harm. Intellect said quickly, before swinging her cloak in on herself and vanishing, her soul self carrying her away as Nightwing shook his head. Frowning deeply a second later he then looked to the others as they looked on with obvious confusion. Dude what just happened? Beast Boy questioned and Nightwing sighed while looking to the others. Obviously she realized what was going on, panicked, thought we were in danger, and left to protect us. Nightwing responded, and Beast Boy frowned for a moment before shaking his head. Dude, that is so like her. Always trying to protect us, just like when she tried to get me, and Cyber to leave her, when she fought that red monster in her mind. He noted with a soft smile to himself and Knight nodded his head. Yeah, but she seems to have forgotten, we're a team, and we won't let her face this alone. Knight stated and then turned and ran in the direction that Raven's soul self had went, soon followed by the rest of the Titans. Tartarus HQ. Jinx stood within Tartar Sops, Donna yawning as she sat on the back of the sofa, while the others all looked at her expectantly. Alright Clutch Head we're here. So tell us what the hell is going on already. Gizmo shouted at the girl and Jinx nodded her head, before crossing her arms with a frown across her face. Last night Tempest went out to save his girlfriend, Raven, when she was abducted by the Ravager, the same person who caused Blackfire to go berserk. Jinx started and Blackfire growled while one eye twitched. Anyways, it seems Ravager has those ninja hunting temp on her peril as they were the ones actively holding Raven hostage. During battle it seems, the temp got a near fatal injury from the nin, though was thankfully stabilized by Raven. Jinx further explained, and Mammoth cracked his knuckles with a frown. 
Namath was known to be protective of his friends. Of course, given the treatment he and his sister Shimmer had faced in Australia, it wasn't too hard to figure out why that was. However, Gizmo had no such compulsion thus slapped his face and grimaced while shaking his head. The tiny terror wishing for, not the first time, that he wasn't teamed up with these clutch heads. Great and now I suppose you want us to hunt down the ninja with extreme prejudice while they're still recovering. Gizmo guessed and the smirk on Jinx's face was all the confirmation he needed. Oh man, this is seriously not in my job description. Hunting ninja isn't our thing, that's Cheshire's thing. Gizmo reminds and Jinx frowned at the miniature villain. Are you telling me you won't be able to find Ravager, and by proxy the Nin? Jinx questioned and Blackfire blinked before cracking her knuckles with a white grin payback, was going to be a bitch, when she got her hands on that one-eyed wench. Snorting at the accusation, Gizmo cracked his knuckles before calling up the main screen for ops, and used his controller to work it. Blinking for a moment, the others watched as Gizmo hit a few things, and several windows flashed over the screen. I can find Miss Slade easy, especially if she's got those ninja with her. Like Tempest, the ninja uses a specific energy source, so, if I scan the city to locate that energy source, I should be able to find her hideout. Gizmo explained and Donnie blinked before looking down to the tiny tear. Should. She questioned and Gizmo nodded his head with a frown. Yeah, knowing Miss Slade she's going to have a very well hidden hideout more than likely underground, so I won't be able to pinpoint her exact location however, she'll need some kind of vents to draw an air to her base, so some of their chakra will have probably leaked out for me to locate. The tiny terror explained while grinning as a map came up and two positions were marked. One of those is Titan's Tower, so it's got to be x right. Dwila noted and Gizmo nodded his head with a smirk. Meaning that the other signature is more than likely those other nin. Blackfire reasoned and yet again, Gizmo nodded his head, still smirking. Alright then Tartarus, that's our location. I want all of you to search it thoroughly for an entrance. Once one of you finds it, call the others, so we can take those nin down. Remember not to engage them alone, they are armed and very dangerous. Jinx orders the others, getting nods from the rest of her team, a smirk crossed over Jinx's face. Alright then, Tartarus, move out. She ordered and the group hopped off of the sofa, and out of their HQ, before heading into the city, Jump City. Nightwing was really having a really bad day, in fact, he was starting to believe the Joker when he talked about it, only taking a really bad day to drive a man to lunacy. Bad thought, don't go there. Knight told himself as he and the others raced across the city, still looking for Raven, when they heard a scream. Blinking, Knight slid to a stop and saw the aforementioned girl, holding onto a streetlight with white eyes, while a slug passed by under her, fear. All the titans said in a dull monotone, while the girl looked over at them, and screamed before jetting off down the street. Dude, are we really that scary? Beast Boy had to ask and Knight gave him a look. No no we're not, she's just all of Raven's fear incarnate. Nightwing replied before looking over to Kid Flash. Stop her. He ordered and Kid Flash gave a mock salute to his leader before jetting down the street. Soon coming up in front of Raven he grabbed her arms as she looked at him with white eyes and screamed once more. Chill. We're only trying to help you Raven. Kid Flash tried to say and Raven then pulled a ghost trick as she ran straight through his body. Okay that was so weird. Kid Flash said with a shiver while the other titans ran past him. Hey, wait for me. Kid Flash called, before running after them, then past them, and grabbed Raven's ankles to knock her over, Knight and the other's dog piling her to stop her soon after. Let me go. She's going to eat me, if I don't get out of here. I can't let it happen, I have to get away, the others can't fight her off, so I have to run. Fear exclaimed while clawing at the ground with white eyes, and Starfire wrapped her arms around her neck. Please friend Raven we only wish to help you. Please tell us the problem so that we might assist you in finding a solution. Starfire pleaded with the violet-haired girl, and Raven gave her a wide-eyed look. No. You can't stop her, she'll leave me alive, and then hurt you all, and I don't want that. Got to run, can't let her find me. Fear started to say again, while still clawing to get away from them, while Beast Boy blinked. So wait, she's afraid for her safety. Beast Boy questioned and Donna shrugged her shoulders from next to him. As interesting as all of this is, maybe we should get up. Knight grunted out from near the bottom of the pile, a completely covered Kid Flash mumbling his agreement from below the others. Soon managing to untangle themselves from one another as Starfire held the struggling Fear in her grasp, Nightwing sighed and looked to Fear with a frown. Alright Fear, what the hell, is going on around here? Knight demanded and the girl looked around nervously, her eyes darting to and fro. Rage, she got loose. Then, when I, I mean she, I mean Raven tried to stop her, she was pulled into Rage. Now Rage is pulling the rest of us into her one by one. Raven and Bravery were first since they were strongest besides her, now only me and Love and Lust are left. We're losing the struggle within. Fear explained quickly, still looking around with white eyes. Wait dude, so there are two more emotions besides you? Beast Boy asked and Fear shook her head. Love and Lust are one emotion. She also embodies our loyalty and kindness. 
she explained and Beast Boy blushed, still stuck on Lust being next. Old Starfire wondered what a kind version of Raven would even be like. Alright, that's more information than we've had all day. At an intellect's idea it has something to do with that green stuff, and we really need to get Raven back to the tower. Knight noted only for fear to open her mouth in a silent scream before slumping in Starfire's arms. Friend Raven, are you alright? Starfire questioned and an evil grin spread over Raven's lips, as four red eyes opened, and her cloak turned blood red, while looking at the alien princess. Oh she's just fine, after all, she's mine now. Rage sat with a wide fanged grin and Starfire quickly released her with a yelp, Raven's cloak turning purple as she stopped herself from hitting the ground, her four eyes vanishing as well. Raven? Starfire questioned and the purple cloaked Raven groaned as her hair started to grow longer, ending at her waist, and her ears took a very noticeable point. Why are her ears so pointy now? Donna asked Nightwing, the leader of the team shrugging even as Raven suddenly shot up and jumped at Starfire. Starfire are you alright, she didn't hurt you did she? Raven asked worriedly while fussily checking Starfire's hat for wounds, and the red hat slowly shook her head. No friend Raven I am undamaged. Starfire allowed and the girl breathed an audible sigh of relief before closing her eyes and smiling warmly. But, I don't know what I'd do if she'd hurt you. Raven then sat before Nightwing cleared his throat and she turned to the others. Oh, are you all alright as well? Rage didn't hurt any of you did she? Raven asked the others and Nightwing shook his head, Raven smiling warmly once more. Thank goodness. She said and Knight blushed slightly, the kind compassionate version of Raven a little too motherly for his liking. Dude, are you supposed to be lust, or what? Beast Boy asked and the purple cloaked Raven smiled cheekily for a moment, before whispering something to Beast Boy. Blushing the green changeling then passed out on the spot and Knight looked at with white eyes. Friend Beast Boy. Star called worriedly while flying down to look at Beast Boy as he lay unconscious in her arms. Blinking for a moment, Knight then looked back to Lover, Lus with white eyes. What did you just say to him? Knight asked and the girl whistled innocently for a moment before looking down at her boots. I need new boots. She said to mostly herself before reaching down to take off her whole boots and snapped her fingers. Instantly, black energy wrapped around her legs before forming into a pair of thigh-high black leather boots with horizontal slits near the tops of them much better. She said to herself with a smile, and Kid Flash leaned over to Nightwing. This is definitely lust. He supplied and Knight gave him a look. Fear said she was also loyalty and love. Knight reminded and Kid Flash shrugged his shoulders, while Lust stuck her old boots into her cloak, where they then vanished into the shadows. Alright, now if you'll excuse me, I'm heading to the tower to make certain Naruto is healed. And then, well. Lust stated while a silly smile spread over her lips at a thought, before giggling as she walked off. Oh yeah, that's Lust alright. Kid Flash stated and Nightwing sighed to himself, wondering how this personality could be so loving one moment, then so well he'd rather not say, the next. Let's just follow her, at least she's actually heading for the tower. Knight reminded, and the others had to give him that as they walk after the happily humming to herself Raven, while Donna was now carrying the unconscious beast boy over one of her shoulders. Following the purple cloaked Raven, they had to wonder what crazy situation they were going to find themselves in next. Ravager's HQ. Ayane smirked as she looked at a mirror, only a streak of pink hair remained among her now predominantly fuchsia colored locks. Ah now this is so much fucking better. She said while looking to one of her dark forest green eyes, and frowned at the sole remaining emerald green eye she still had. Damn it. This is not good. I look like a freak. Sakura said while gritting their teeth and Ayane scoffed, and then tested which parts of their body she controlled and smirked as she could use the left arm, and both legs at this point, says the girl who's starting to disappear. Ayane reminded and Sakura growled low in their throat while narrowing her still emerald eye. Not if I can. Sakura started to say only for Ayane to cover their mouth, Sakura trying to pry her hand from their mouth. Struggling with herself the girl fell to her side, and Ayane eventually managed to stand before ramming her right shoulder into a wall. She heard Sakura scream in pain in her mind, and bit her lip to keep from doing so as well before then blinking as Sakura started to rant in their mind. Oh Sakura looks like you can't talk anymore. Ayane noted with an evil smirk on her face, and a confused Sakura blinked her remaining eye, while Ayane removed her hand from her mouth with a smirk. What the hell are you? Sakura started to question before noticing she couldn't project her voice anymore, and started to scream at Ayane indignantly. Snickering to herself, Ayane then yawned while making her way back to her corner and sat down, then used her left arm to hold her right down, and placed her head on both and closed her eyes. Elsewhere in the base, Sasuke was coughing up bile as his skin turned gray and claws formed on his fingers. Looking at his hands he then groaned and fell to his side, bringing his knees up to his chest as he felt his eyes whiting. What's wrong with me? He wondered before reaching a hand up to the sink, and pulled his body up to look at his face, eyes widening at what he was seeing. His Sharingan was still active, but his right eye was now familiar yellow gold with a thin slit for a pupil, and purple tribal markings had formed around his eyes, before coming down to a point at the sides of his nose. What? 
he questioned of no one, before wrapping his arms around his waist, and falling to his side once more, eyes wide. What's happening to me? He managed to get out as his body briefly sparked, and his eyes rolled into the back of his head. Seconds later his hand reached back up and he pulled his body back up, a sinister chuckle echoing from his throat. Oh it feels so good to be free. He mused strangely before looking at himself in the mirror, as his black hair took a blue sheen and grew longer and spikier than ever. I finally have it. He said to himself while grinning, long and sharp canines now revealed. The Sharingan is finally mine. The voice of another said through Sasuke with another sinister laugh. Titan's Tower. Cyber breathed out several breaths while hiding in a room, his sonic cannon at the ready. He'd been running, fighting, and outright trying to escape from the psychopathic monster Naruto had turned into for well over an hour now. Bulping for a moment, the oldest member of the Titans turned his head to look out of the room. The lights had been totaled by the creature, ripped out of the walls was actually a better description, seeing as from what he could tell, it had almost perfect night vision, but disliked bright lights. Maybe if I get outside it won't follow me. Cyber mused before looking to a window and grimaced as he saw the clouds had covered the sun outside. Never mind oi this is so not good. If that thing gets out at night, who knows who it could hurt. Cyber thought to himself, before stiffening as he heard a heavy thud, and placed his back to the wall behind him. Moving one hand to open a camera on his finger, Cyborg watched around the corner as the massive beast approached. Looking around the small room with his normal bionic eye, Cyborg hoped he didn't seem out of place. He had actually picked this particular room for a reason, and it wasn't for any kind of camouflage either. It was because the elevator was directly across from him, the door shoved into the wall revealing the elevator shaft. If he could wait for the beast to get close to him, he could also just rush the thing and hopefully shove it into the shaft. While not wanting to hurt him, he did want to survive, and besides, given everything that he'd survived already, he was fairly certain a drop like that wouldn't do much damage to an 8-foot tall monster. I really should have called Rob and had him bring in a tank for this. Cyborg thought to himself as he continued to watch the creature approach, its eyes looking for him, as he took a gulp of air. The creature suddenly sniffed the air, looking for his scent, and Cyborg was glad he had very little to track due to his unique nature. Rumbling in its throat, the creature started to turn, and Cyborg looked around. Seeing a rock, he slowly got down and picked it up, then tossed it down the hole. Instantly the creature's long almost rabbit-like ears corked back, and it turned around to look down the hole. Rumbling in its throat it lowered itself onto all fours before making its way down the hole, narrowing its eyes as it approached. Waiting, quietly, calmly, Cyber briefly wondered why this kind of thing only ever happened to him, before then preparing to make his move as the creature approached. Once the beast was in position Cyber quickly moved, slamming his cannon into the beast as a punch while firing it, causing it to roar out in pain, as it was thrown into the back of the elevator shaft from the sheer force of the blow. Screeching as it fell down the shaft, the beast clawed at the walls around him, sparks flying as pieces of what looked like bone chipped off of its fingers. Blinking and slowly making his way to the elevator shaft, Cyber peered into it to make sure the beast was gone, before pumping a fist. Bia. And that's why you don't mess with me in my house. Cyborg stated with a wide grin before cursing and ducking back as a bolt of lightning was shot from the bottom of the shaft. Backpedaling, Cyborg then gaped as he heard a strange thumping echoing from the shaft. No way man, no way. He mumbled before slowly crawling towards the shaft, and looked down into its depths. His fears were unfortunately confirmed as the beast was somehow jumping up the shaft, catching the sides of it, before leaping up and repeating this, climbing the shaft faster than humanly possible. Oh man, why me? Cyborg wondered while looking to the sky, and then quickly got up and made his way down the hall and away from the shaft. Seconds later the beast jumped back into the hall, its fingertips glowing as a fine mist condensed over them and then vanished. Narrowing its now clearly livid eyes, the beast let out a screeching roar before lunging down the hall on all fours. As it came to another hall, the beast's eyes briefly widened as Cyborg slammed his sonic cannon into his face, and fired at the same time once more. Crying out in pain, the beast backed up while Cyborg formed a second cannon from his other arm, and lunged at it with a roar. Slamming his cannons into the beast and firing at the same time, Cyborg watched as it was sent back with each blow. However, then it grabbed one of his arms as he tried to punch it and narrowed its eyes. Oh this is bad. Cyborg muttered before crying out as the beast lifted him up and then slammed him into the ground, knocking the wind from him. Roaring it then swung Cyborg into the walls at their sides once, twice, three times before slamming it into the roof, and then the floor once more before releasing his arm. Sniffing Cyborg, the beast narrowed its eyes on him before placed a hand onto his neck to hold him down. Leaning forward it narrowed its eyes, and a long tongue came out of its mouth. Reaching up, Cyborg grabbed its tongue and gave it a glare. You are so not licking me with this big ass tongue. Cyborg shouted before shoving his free cannon into the beast's mouth and firing, sending it flying back and into a wall. Panting heavily, Cyber pushed himself up and looked on as the beast slowly got back up. Oh you got to be shitting me. He muttered while the beast narrowed its eyes on him and roared. 
Crouching back, it then lunged forward, and Cyborg slammed his fist into his face, knocking it back once more. Panting heavily as the creature stumbled back, Cyborg pushed himself up fully, and then watched the creature shake its head and glare at him angrily. Well I can say one thing you can really take a beating. Cyborg noted, and the beast roared while crouching down and lunged at him, swinging his claws at him as he backed up. Swinging his arms once more his claws sliced through Cyborg's chest, the teen's eyes widening in shock. Shit. He exclaimed before ducking as the beast threw a punch towards him. Rolling behind him, Cyborg would have gotten up at it not grabbed one of his legs, arms still lodged in the wall as it glared at him. Beat this. He then shouted as a slot opened on his foot, a rocket flying out and slamming into the beast's face. The beast released Cyborg as the rocket hit, then covered its face, while Cyborg crawled away before breaking out into a run, as the beast roared loudly. Ripping its arm out of the wall, the beast then crouched low and lunged after Cyborg as he made his escape. Said teen turned down a corner and then slid to a halt at the end of the next hole. Hitting a switch on the earpiece on his left side, a targeting lens folded out of his body and over his bionic eye. Instantly, slots on his shoulders opened to reveal several missiles. Waiting for a moment until the beast suddenly appeared in his sights, Cyborg fired the missiles then winced as he heard it cry out in pain. Sorry about that Nar, but I don't want to be on the menu. Cyborg mumbled while grimacing as he placed a hand onto his chest plate. Looking up after he had, Cyborg paled greatly upon seeing the beast looking down at him with furious eyes. Aw shit. He mumbled before the beast grabbed him and then lunged towards the end of the hull, and then used his body to ram through a wall. With the Titans. The Titans were fast approaching Titan's tower, however they stopped at the docks, when they saw something burst out of the tower in the distance. Friend Nightwing, what is happening? Starfire questioned and Knight narrowed his eyes, and pushed on the sides of his mask. Lenses in his mask then zoomed in to give him a view of a monster standing on top of Cyborg, before turning to stare at him. Shaking his head he then watched as the beast growled low in his throat, and threw Cyborg along the water, before crouching back and launching after him. The beast caught up with Cyborg, and began to rapidly slash the Cyborg with its sharp claws, then kick it into the docks. Cyborg. Starfire exclaimed while flying over to him, only for Donna to grab her as the beast slammed into Cyborg, and sent him skidding along the concrete back into a heap. Seeing this, Starfire broke free of Donna's hold and flew to her friend, while the Amazon looked at the cloud where the beast lay in wait warily. Narrowing his eyes, Knight looked at the dust kicked up by the beast's attack as well, and watched as it slowly sifted away, to reveal a truly horrifying figure to the mole. By the gods. Donna whispered while a pair of bright orange eyes looked around, the plus-shaped pupil dilating into thin slits. What the titans were seeing was a five-foot-tall beast, while it was on all fours, more around eight foot on its hind legs, with reddish-black fur and spikes of hair on its head, and stripes of obsidian reptilian flesh, also covering its body with red marks beside of its eyes. Five long tails arching off of its tailbone and swinging behind it, with sharp claws on all of its fingers and toes, its ears were on the top of its head, and curved back like long rabbit ears, its mouth was formed into a pumpkin-like grin of triangular shapes. While bone had formed over his face into a skull mask with fangs for teeth, along his back and over his spine in plates, over his waist like a ripsage, and also covered its forearms and hands in the shape of a much larger beast's claws. Dude what is that thing? Beast Boy demanded while backing away, Kid Flash not sure what to make of it, either shook his head. Naruto. Love whispered to herself with white eyes, and the beast snapped its orange eyes onto her. Rumbling low in its throat, the beast then reared its head back and roared loudly, the ground beneath it shuddering from the vibrations. Frowning in the beast's direction, Knight pulled his staff from his belt, and twirled it into his stance, while glaring at the beast. I don't know what that is, but it's obviously not friendly. Titans, go. Nightwing ordered while lunging at the beast, and Love's eyes snapped open. Wait. She called only for them to ignore her, Nightwing throwing several explosive discs at the beast. The discs impacted, but only seemed to irritate it as it then slammed its hands into the ground. Instantly the ground shuddered with impact as lightning formed out of it in a dome that spread and sent Nightwing flying back. Donna then came flying at the beast and swung both arms, socking it in the side of its head, and sending it flying into a building. The beast merely roared out in fury at the attack, while throwing rubble from its body while jumping out of it. Beast Boy then turned into a rhino while running towards the beast, and slammed into it horn first. Beast Boy was thus surprised as the beast merely narrowed its eyes and grabbed his horn before digging its feet into the concrete. Roaring out and showing its monster strength the beast lifted Beast Boy up by his horn before twisting on one heel, and sending him flying into Donna. Beast Boy's body slammed into Donya, both falling while Kid Flash ran towards the beast. Running around it, he started to rain down hyper-fast punches from all sides to disorientate it. Growling, the beast stomped on the ground, cracking and upturning the concrete and easily tripping Kid Flash. Lashing out he then took hold of Kid Flash's ankle, and lifted the speedster up to its eye level. Oh shit. Kid Flash mumbled before the beast roared and slammed him into the concrete, knocking the breath out of him before it then spun and sent him sailing directly into Nightwing, knocking the former boy wonder back down. 
allowing a low rumble to echo from its throat. The beast then focused its eyes on love before crouching down. Jumping it then landed right in front of the violet-haired girl, her eyes white as she looked up at its very imposing figure. Naruto, is it you? Love questioned and the beast tilted its head, before leaning towards her, and sniffing her for some reason. It is you, isn't it? Love mumbled and reached towards it, only for Starfire to slam into the beast from the side. You will not hurt my friends anymore. Starfire exclaimed while slamming her fists into the beast's face, and Love ran towards the enraged alien princess. Wait Starfire he's not. Love tried to say only for the beast to grab the young Tamaranian's forearms in one hand. Instantly lightning arched from its form and into Starfire, the alien princess gritting her teeth as even her invulnerability had limits. He's not trying to hurt me. Love finished quietly while the beast threw Starfire to the side, the girl shaking and twitching as she hit the ground. Starfire. Night called out while rushing to her side as Beast Boy turned into a raptor, and lunged at the beast with Donna at his side. The two slammed into the beast only for it to hold them back with unbelievable strength, while Nightwing slid down and took hold of Starfire. 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 He said while shaking the girl, and she shivered for a moment, before opening her eyes. Friend Nightwing I wish not to do that ever again. She mumbled and Nightwing breathed a sigh of relief while Love ran over to Cyber. Holding her hands over the titanium teen's head, Love took a breath before using her healing powers on him, as a blue glow enveloped her hands. Soon after, Cyber groaned and then slowly started to sit up while placing a hand to his forehead. Anyone get the license plate number of the semi that hit me? Cyborg wondered aloud and Kid Flash rushed over to the metal teen. That wasn't no semi dude, whatever it is it's a lot tougher. Kid Flash stated, and Cyborg opened his eyes only to shake his head as he saw Donna and Beast Boy trying to fight the beast, only for it to roar and throw them away like rag dolls. Are you people fucking insane? You're fighting. Cyborg started to say and Kid Flash nodded his head. Yeah, one seriously tough creature, but don't worry, I'm sure we'll figure out some way to stop it. Kid Flash said and Cyborg gaped at the red-haired teen incredulously. That's not what I. Cyborg started to say only for Kid Flash to rush at the beast, as Nightwing went to attack it once more. Damn it. Why won't anyone listen to me? Cyborg demanded and Love sighed before shaking her head. People rarely listen when they see something that frightens them, they'd rather make sure it doesn't hurt them before thinking about what it might be. Love noted and Cyborg groaned while slowly getting up to his feet, Love standing up with him. Which emotion are you? Cyborg asked and Love gave a loving smile to him. Love and lust. She replied and Cyborg gave her a look, before shaking his head. Figures you'd be here, when this happens to your boy. He noted and Love grimaced, before they watched as the beast roared and used Knight as a club, to send Kid Flash flying away, then threw Knight into Starfire, and roared loudly while crouching down, ears along the back of its head and mouth pulled into a snow. He's angry and scared, he's being attacked and only knows to protect himself from harm. Love noticed and Cyborg nodded his head, mentally noting that the beast acted almost solely on instinct, not intellect. We need to stop the others, then we can worry about stopping the beast. Love then stated, and Cyborg nodded his head in agreement with the purple cloaked raven. I'll handle Beast Boy and Donna, you take Star, Kid Flash and Knight. Cyborg stated and Love nodded before running over to stop Star from attacking the beast with the field. Friend Raven. What are you doing? Starfire questioned of the girl and Love gave her a look. When we first met Starfire, you were alone and confused, attacking anything that attacked you, so is this beast. It doesn't know what's going on, only that you're attacking it. Love told the Tamaranian princess before forming spheres around Nightwing and Kid Flash. Now could you please explain that to them for me? I need to see about him. Love questioned and Starfire slowly nodded her head as Love released the fields, and walked over to the beast as it narrowed its eyes. Don't be afraid I'm not going to hurt you. Love set to it and it tilted its head to one side, obviously confused. Getting closer to the beast, Love then placed her hands on his face, and breathed a sigh of relief when it didn't attack. I don't want to hurt you, I only want to help. Love told it, and then closed her eyes, and placed her forehead to his for a moment, hello Naruto. She whispered quietly only for her eyes to snap open as she fell to her knees, and her cloak briefly flashed red, and then a familiar blue cloak suddenly took its place. Raven. Nightwing questioned while walking towards the girl, the others staying back and away from the beast. The set girl silently looked to the ground as he came closer, and the beast moved to the side, away from him and Raven, while it still kept him in his sights. The beast then climbed onto a building at the sides, and narrowed its eyes, it could feel, that something was wrong. Raven herself shook for a moment, and then Nightwing placed a hand on her shoulder, and she turned to look at him, tears slowly flowing from her amethyst eyes. I'm sorry Nightwing my mind is a battleground, whipped and ripped asunder, torn from the very fabric of reality. But there's no escape from it anymore I can't restrain her. She whispered mostly to herself, and Nightwing raised a brow towards the strange girl. What do you mean? Night questioned while the other titans, and the beast merely looked on as Raven bowed her head. However, she then held a hand towards Nightwing, and pushed him away with a burst of black energy. 
The energy then turned and circled around the violet-haired girl, a sad smile crossing her features as a massive black raven formed behind her, four glowing red eyes looking down at her sinisterly, and its form twisted into a darker more foreboding visage. I mean, my fate has come. Raven said as the wings of the raven wrapped and spiraled around her. Goodbye, my friends. Raven whispered as her twisted soul self pulled her into itself, before she was pulled into the air. Seconds later, Raven's feet hit the ground, eyes glowing black and head tilted to one side, listless, eyes lifeless, and then an explosion of power was forced from her body, nearly pushing all the watching titans into the distance. Raven. Nightwing exclaimed as the girl hovered in the air, eyes glowing black rather than white, while pure power seemed to spiral around her body. Dude. Beast Boy called out while Starfire, Donna, and Cyborg held him and Kid Flash from flying away. The beast merely looked on from his spot, head tilting to the side as the black energy spiraled upwards into the sky. Dark clouds began to form overhead as the black energy touched it, lightning flashing and thunder cracking as Raven's body began to float higher into the air, a chuckle echoing from her throat. Soon, the chuckle turned into sinister laughter while fire spiraled around her as well, completely concealing the girl as it spiraled up into the sky. The fire around her hit the sky and spiraled outwards, setting the very sky itself ablaze with the titans bearing witness, eyes white in shock and fear. The beast looked up to the sky with interest, wondering what was happening while the others could only stare in shock and wonder, as Raven was seemingly lost to them all. Avager HQ. Takashi's head suddenly snapped up as a pit formed in his gut, massive kai flowing from seemingly everywhere. What the hell? He wondered while slowly getting to his feet. Nearby, Ino shivered visibly with white eyes, and Hinata looked like she wanted to crawl in on herself. Takashi Sensei. Ino questioned with a stutter, and Kakashi silently ran to the exit and up the stairs. Noticing this, Ravager frowned before following after the man, Neji and the others following her while Sakura lagged behind. However, if one were to look at her, they would notice her hair was totally fuchsia now, her eyes both dark green, and a smirk was across her lips. The only portion of Sakura left was her physique and skin tone as Ayane walked around for her. Coming to the exit, Kakashi threw the door open, and gasped as he saw the sky now set ablaze, Hinata and Ino gaping in shock, while even Ravager herself looked shocked by this. Ever seen something like that before? Kakashi questioned and Ravager slowly shook her head, eye wide and unblinking. Behind them, Ayane whistled lowly while noticing a swirling pillar of black energy and flames in the distance. I wonder what's causing that. Ayane wondered to herself silently, while Sakura roared out in annoyance. Damn it Ayane. This isn't funny anymore. Tell Ravager what's going on so we can go back to normal already. Sakura screamed at the girl, who was now in charge, and Ayane snorted quietly so no one would hear. Fat chance and hell pinky, I've got control now so kiss my ass which used to be your ass. Ayane said then reminded with a smirk, and Sakura started to scream at the girl angrily, before Ayane tuned her out while looking to the spectacle. We should check that out, something seriously wrong is happening. Kakashi ordered and Ino looked at the man as if he were crazy. Do you not see that massive pillar of fire? And you want to go towards it, Ino demanded of the man, and he gave her a look before rushing off, Hinata and Neji following, while Ino huffed. Damn it. This is insane. She grumbled before rushing after the others, Ravager and Sakura hot on their heels. Above them all, standing on a building and now fully transformed was Sasuke, a single brow raised as he saw the pillar. Such amazing power, but where is it all coming from? I believe this warrants a little investigation. Sasuke mused to himself, before crouching down, and then jumped into the air, his wings stretching and catching the wind as he flew towards the epicenter of the massive pillar. Elsewhere. Jinx was looking around for the entrance to Ravager's base when she saw the pillar, gaping for only a moment she then shook her head and dug out a communicator. Giz, are you seeing the massive pillar burning the sky or am I just going crazy? Jinx questioned with white eyes and heard the tiny terror start to curse loudly. You already batshit loco dipshit, but yo you, me, and everyone else sees the giant pillar, what should we do about it? Gizmo questioned warily, and Jinx blinked, while looking to the pillar then gulped. Well we should probably check that out, it might be the nin or something just as bad. She reasoned and Gizmo groaned on his end of the communicator. I knew you were going to say that alright I'll alert everyone to head towards the docks. Gizmo over and out. Giz replied while Jinx absently nodded her head, then stowed the communicator away. Staring at the spectacle a moment longer, the pink-haired girl then shook her head as she ran towards the docks, intent to find out what was happening down there. Docks. The titans were holding on for dear life, as the sheer power rolling off of the pillar of fire and shadows was enough to push them away. Opening his eyes as he braced himself against the wind, Nightwing saw it start to fade before spiraling inward, becoming smaller and smaller as it did. Soon all that was left, was something spinning in the pillar's place, and that was also soon gone as a new creature was revealed. 
The cloak burned away as her two brooches fell to the ground with the audible clatter. Though it didn't matter as this being was clearly unlike any of the others. Nightwing's eyes widening in shock and horror. It was identical to Raven in height, build, and some of her appearance with the gemstone on her brow. But the new features they'd seen on Raven's emotions throughout the day had remained. The difference to before however, were her now flame red skin, long ebony hair as black as the feathers of her namesake, deep purple lips, and four glowing red eyes. Standing up, the titans looked at this new incarnation of their friend with obvious shock. The beast however showed no signs of fear as it jumped to the ground, and made its way over to her. Her lips caught up at this, a small show of affection, before placing her hand on top of its head. The beast nuzzled her hands for a moment before Raven turned her head to look at the titans, an amused grin spreading across her lips. The time for hiding is over. The girl said in a hauntingly enticing voice, ruined by the sinister smirk crossing her lips as a fireball formed in her free hand. Human garbage. She then exclaimed while looking to the titans, a grin spreading over her face as she did. Prepare to scream. For your end, has finally come. She stated darkly, while the beast narrowed its eyes on them, while hissing in the back of its throat, Raven grinning at the shock looks on the titans' faces. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.